What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I want to talk more about the Curse of Osiris DLC and what we know about it so far and whether or not it will deliver on the expectations many of us have on it. Now before we get into it I would like to clear something up. Over the past couple of weeks I've posted a few videos which have been seen by many of me basically bashing Bungie and what they're doing. Basically I will never be happy, I will be salty on their game whether it's great or not. Basically me being a hater. These comments come from videos of me straight up telling the truth and what I believe on the state of Destiny 2 right now. While you are entitled to your opinion on my actions, like I'm entitled to my opinion on the game, here is my opinion on this matter. I do not hate or intentionally with Venom mean to upset Bungie or any of you guys by what I say or speak of. Bungie and Destiny have changed my life for the better numerous times and that's a fact. That however is also because of you guys and my supporters. Yes Bungie have basically given me the books and water but you guys have allowed me to build a house right here. And to be honest I will take you guys over Bungie any day of the week and it's with this mentality in which I bring you these videos. I am not going to lie to you guys. I won't so to speak kiss Bungie's ass on all what they do. If something's wrong and I believe it's wrong I will straight up state it. I know it messes up ties I have with Bungie as they don't like the kind of videos I've been posting and to tell you guys the truth it already has. I didn't even get a notification on the recent invites to play Curse of All Souls early and to be honest I rarely see press kit emails too. Does that make me salty? Not in the slightest. Do I care? Not in the slightest. It's their game and the choices they make on who to invite and look after in the community is completely up to them. I've always said I won't front the BS they pull to save face with them. When they do good things I report on them and praise them to the fullest but at the end of the day I am one of a select few who will call them out on these things and also has a voice in the community. Although far from the biggest it's still a squeak that can be heard sometimes and as long as I always have this squeak I will report in on the good and the bad things they pull. It's as simple as that. So let's talk about the Curse of Osiris and what we know about it so far. So I believe there's around 8 missions coming, 2 of which I believe will be strikes. So fair play, this seems like a decent amount of missions to do that will come with the Curse of Osiris. Let's just hope though we learn more about Osiris with more depth on him as a character, more than what we already know that is. With this I would be happy. I'm quite looking forward to though meeting and playing alongside Sagira as she, Osiris' ghost shell, does indeed take the place of our own ghost shell for a certain while while doing these missions. I think Serena Beckerin is a great addition to the already amazing voice cast they have with this game, so that I think will be epic. I also think the Infinite Forest is definitely revolutionary in terms of what we have done within the Destiny universe, something we ain't quite seen before. I definitely look forward to exploring the many different scenarios this place offers. So what about the new raid activity? The Eater of Worlds. This new raid activity is known as a lair, basically an add-on or extension to the Leviathan raid. Now while the fact many people are calling lazy, uh, which to a degree I can see where you are coming from, I think this raid lair might be a good addition. Now if you remember the first DLC within Destiny 1, we did get a raid, which in my opinion though turned out to be pretty boring pretty quick. With the second expansion we got the Prison of Elders, which again got pretty boring pretty quick, we didn't get a raid with the second expansion. So with these in mind, maybe just maybe, raid layers could improve things upon what we've already learned by DLCs and their shortcoming to Destiny. Keeping the basis of the raid already in place, but adding new scenarios, new missions, new loot to that same place could actually work. Now these layers, and I say layers as it's confirmed there are two coming, one with each DLC, and both will be extensions to the Leviathan raid. Now it's unknown whether or not these layers will be Cabal themed. It makes sense in a way that they are though, but then again the Eater of Worlds, a ship this size, what kind of worlds has this thing ate and what kind of enemies did it eat with them? That you have to ask yourself. Now I truly doubt Bungie will give us three raid bosses all of the same enemy type, three raid activities in a row. That in my opinion just won't and can't happen. Well I should never say can't with Bungie but yeah you know. They did confirm these raid layers will be packed with a new complete set of gear, so that's weapons and armors as well as cosmetics. They also have completely new encounters and also new bosses. So to me I'm quite excited to learn more. But now to the big point, endgame. This is what 99% of the Destiny community want and need. 
We need longevity. We need reasons to continue to play after reaching that top level. There needs to be intent in pulling us from other games, other great, great games that people are playing that are out at the moment. It's going to be difficult for sure, but with the right changes in place, which in my opinion shouldn't be too difficult, but hey, I ain't a game developer. With the right changes, I think a lot of the community would be happy. It's just this is the main issue most are having with Destiny at the moment. The game is way too casual, it's way too easy, and it gets seriously boring too quick. And that is because the end game isn't there. Giving us new missions to play, new raid activity to compete in, new loot to chase, which we all love, doesn't fix the issue everyone will have after a few weeks if the end game within this game isn't sorted. It's all about giving us something to play on for. With no mention at all of rank PvP play, which I do hope comes sooner or later for the sake of the Destiny PvP community, it all basically relies on the PvE side of the game. PvP can't keep up with the likes of Card, Fortnite, PUBG, Battlefront and so on because these games give you reason to play them, give you reasons to grind, give you levels to chase. So PvE is where it's at. Now the changes they have announced with Season 2 are great, many new additions we all want which will be incorporated, but is this enough? I ain't sure. This is what we need to know more on, this in my opinion is way more important to learn about and what most of the community want to know more of, more so over the basics behind the Curse of Osiris DLC, that's just my opinion though. All I do know is, I wouldn't get your hopes up in a patch which fixes all of these issues of no end game coming anytime soon. Maybe small minor updates here and there will be more likely. At the end of the day the DLC was in development before the game was released, so changes to the end game system are unlikely to drop with this first expansion. I doubt they would have the time to take in all the feedback from the community, given on these end game issues, and incorporate a permanent fix which comes with this DLC. In saying that though, it doesn't mean they don't have plans. Hopefully they do and announce them sometime soon, so please don't get disheartened by what I have said in today's video. They could indeed have changes made and ready waiting for us. That would be epic for sure. So an exciting next month ahead of us. Stay tuned for any other updates in news surrounding the DLC right here on my channel. So if you're new around here and enjoy Daily Destiny, be sure to subscribe. Thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I'll see you on that next one. Stay.